Hey there, and welcome to RAM's basics tutorial series. If you need more information about RAM, you can book a demo with our team using the link in the description. You can also create a free RAM account and use the templates below to draw along with me as we go through this tutorial. Let's dive in. Welcome to Ryan's tutorial about how to create custom properties, assign them to elements and create smart tables. Custom properties can be things like an item's price, an area square meter count, delivery time uh, of different materials in your project and more. And these can be then listed and streamlined in specs like FFNE sheets, takeoff reports and other kind of tables that you need for your project. So let's dive in and I'll start to explain each project and show you how to do it step by step in the tool. I'm already in one of my RAN models, sharing my paper canvas, and I'm gonna jump into my floor plan canvas, which we can find a basic drawing um, for this example. When we're talking about custom properties, it's information that we can add to different elements in our drawing. This can be custom properties tied to surfaces, like the material, the brand where we procure this material, and the same goes for items. So chairs, blocks, elements on my drawing. Let's start with an example and just select uh, a block on my drawing. Custom properties can be found in two different areas of your canvas. First, in the left panel, where we just transferred canvases. If we scroll down to this tag icon, we'll see this is the custom property panel. Here you can manage all the custom properties that you have in a given model, meaning create new ones or delete existing ones. So you can see here that these are the custom props existing in my drawing. And if I'm ready to delete one, I can click on this delete. Or to create a new one, I can click on the plus button. You have different types of properties you can assign to an element. So for example, if you want to assign new properties to our model or to the specific block, we can add the prop name up here and select different prop types. You can select text, number, length, area, volume, price, a yes or no option, links, and also single select or multi-select. So it's a very handy way to manage the data in your drawing. The other place where you can access custom props is in the bottom right. So once you select an item, its specific custom props will appear here. You can see that this bed has custom props tied to it, like material, a brand, a price, and more. If I select this surface, for example, instead, I'll see that this surface also has custom props tied to it, material, brand, lead time, client approval, price per square meter, and so on and so forth. You'll see that this is all changeable. So of course you can input your own material in here with your different text. So this can be procured by anywhere else, like hardwood, design, or whatever brand uh, you wanna assign here. When you're ready to add information onto items in your drawing, you have two ways to do this. You can either manually select items and add the props from here, but there's a more efficient way to manage data in your drawing. The way of doing it is adding custom properties that are inherited from an upper level to a lower level of an item. What do I mean by upper level and lower level? When it comes to blocks, blocks have what we call in RAN block definition and a block instance. Let me show that example. So if I go here to the block panel, you'll see that I have my block library where all the different blocks in this model exist and new ones that I can drag and drop. And then, for example, this bed exists as an instance in my model. So this is the block definition. This is the block instance. And when I drag and drop this block and copy it multiple times, each one of these blocks is an instance of the block definition. When you click on a block definition, its custom props will be listed here on the right. And these will be inherited by any item I drag and drop. So you'll see here that each instance of this block has the information already tied to it which is very handy and is especially handy if you're creating custom block libraries with items that you tend to use again and again in different projects and already have the information pre-built in there. Then you can start each project with blocks that already have the information you need. If you wanna change the information of one block, for example, let's say that you're procuring two beds and the price of one is 600 euro, but the other one is half off, you can change this bed's price specifically to 300 euros instead of 600 euros. Then this will override the initial information. You see here it's highlighted in blue. You can always revert to the original information that you had, revert your override, or leave it there. This will be the indication to info that was overridden or not. 
So that's one example of inheritance logic. There's another way to do this if we're not talking about blocks specifically, but rather surfaces or areas. We can use styles on surfaces to then give those surfaces specific information. So the same way we show that this specific style of this wood hatch has some information, like its material, brand, and such, is actually tied to the style itself, rather this specific room. Let's see how that happens. So if I go and visit the style panel down here, I can see that by selecting style from the panel, I'll have all its information, its props set here. So in fact, if I change a prop from this area, let's say client approval from yes to no, I'll already have that reflected anywhere in my model where this style is applied. So again, if I click this now and I go down here, I'll see that the client approval is no. And in the same logic, if I want to override a material in a specific room, let's say um, this shade of material is going to be a bit darker, I can select this material and indicate that specifically for this room only. So those are the ways you can create custom properties, apply them onto items, and also apply them onto styles or block definitions that are then going to be inherited by those in your model. Now that we have step one kind of down and everything is hopefully clear, how can we use these custom properties in a really fast way to create tables and schedules? So in Rayon, we have two types of tables. I'm going to start with exploring the first type, which can be found here uh, beneath the page panel. There's a table panel. Let me show you two specs or spec sheets that I have ready, and then we'll see together how to create a new one. Here's an FFNE uh, spec sheet. This basically lists all the different blocks that I have in my model, their brand, their price, client approved material. So all those props we've been discussing before. Here I have a material takeoff report. So this has the name of each room in our project, the area, so square meter count uh, and sum for each of the rooms, the brand, material, lead time, price per square meter, and so on and so forth. Again, you can create as many custom props as you'd like. Let's create a new table and see how that would work. I'll exit this one. And once you create a new table in RAM, it's going to start off by listing all the elements you have in this canvas. You need to select the canvas you want to have data pulled from. So you'll see here that in this case, the default is the current canvas, the floor plan canvas, but you can also go ahead and select an active canvas, all canvases. So this is up to you to decide. If canvases is not something or concept that seems familiar, I invite you to watch our tutorial about canvases and views. This is a really key one. So let's select the data from this specific canvas in this case. Another thing we want to do is decide which type of items we want to appear in this table. So if we go to this three dot button, we'll find different categories that can be disabled and enabled. The default is all the walls, zones, and block instances will be listed in your table. If you're making an FFNE table with procurement of specific blocks, you might want to have only blocks appear in your table. If you want only zones, you can go ahead and disable uh, the blocks, leave all the zones. This is kind of key to get started. Now that you've done that, so we have filtered out all the zones, which is basically each of the rooms we have in our project, anywhere we placed a zone on the canvas bedroom, master bedroom, garden, and so on and so forth. All we have to do now is add the custom props that we assigned onto those rooms. You'll see here the full list of different props that we have added. The first one is the area prop. This one is generated automatically when you create a zone and it has a square meter tag that is adjusted accordingly. And by the way, when you create a table, it's going to be a live synced table. So for example, if we zoom in here for a second, we see the garage is 23. 60 square meter count. It's going to be highlighted in the table. You see this in blue and also live updated. So if I move this wall, the square meter count will adjust accordingly. This also goes for, you know, blocks. If I delete a block, if I delete a zone, it's going to be subtracted or added to my table. So it's a really nice way to always have an up-to-date reflection of your drawing. All right, next up is to add some more props. So I'll just click on the plus and then let's select the ones we've added, which is material, brand. We can add the uh, client approved and this can go on and on. A 
few things I want you to note about tables. You can add sorting, grouping, and filtering into your tables to reflect the information you need. So when we're talking about sorting, each one of these columns can be sorted by its alphabetical order. So let's say you want all the zones to be from A to Z in our list. There you go. Then we can also add different filtering. So for example, if we want to add a filter here and reflect only the rooms that have a wood material, we can go ahead and add filter. This works with the logic of equal to, non-equal to, is empty, so on and so forth. So let's do equal to, and then for this full right. That's it. It's going to show us the two rooms that have a wooden material assigned to them. And this is how you can kind of filter and group. When you're ready to remove that, we can just remove the filter. So clear filter. We can leave the sorting. The next thing I want to show is grouping. So I have just a bunch of, you know, random lines here. In this case, they're according to this alphabetical order, but I do also want them to be grouped. So let's say I want to group all the material brand in this list. So then I can see where I have to procure where. I'll go to the brand and then add group by. Now that I did that, you can see that Ryan has batched the brands. I can see all the rooms that have materials from tile love, their account, and then the sum. The same goes for Woodland, Outdoor Depot, and so on and so forth. So this is up to you again to manage. Let's ungroup this for now. So I'll just ungroup and we have here the full list. There's a few other things you can do to work with tables directly in this interface, which is maximize and minimize your table. So if you have a lot of information, this is just a way for you to be a little bit more comfortable when you're viewing it all. Let's minimize that. And the other thing you can do is export this info into Excel sheets, Google sheets that can be done right here. Lastly, you can also insert a table directly on the canvas, which is a super handy one. So if I click on insert, you'll see that it's duplicated this table on the canvas. And then it'd be up to me to kind of refine the style of this, edit it how I want it to be. So once you have your table on the canvas, you can double click it to override it and edit its appearance. For example, you can change the text color here. Let's make that maybe just gray. Same for the lines. Maybe you want to have that a bit more subtle as well. And of course the text is size. So selecting this and simply changing that right here. That's too big. Let's go to this size. This table will remain live. So if you edit the custom props on elements, this will reflect both in the table and the table panel and in the table that you've placed on your canvas. You can also kind of add onto this table manually by drawing lines, adding information. There may be things you want to add without having them appear in the actual smart table, rather adding them uh, afterwards or having them be a bit more agile. Now that we've explored how to use the smart tables in RAN, let's see a bit more of a simple option that has some manual editing that it enables. I'll go ahead and select the table tool down here under this chiffon and place a table on my canvas. As a default, this will just uh, draw a few columns and rows. This is of course all editable. So double clicking this will enable you to kind of reformat it. We already showed how to change, you know, the text size and color and stuff. That's the same here. And you can then go ahead and just input text. So by double clicking on cell, you can change its text manually. That is one option. You can just go ahead and fill these tables, add columns, remove columns. So basically select and go ahead to insert row before, row after, and so on and so forth. Another option that you do have, if you did add custom properties onto elements, you can summon them into this table and have them live synced without going through the effort of creating these tables here, or just if you need a mashup of both systems. The way that this can work is you'd double click the table and the same thing as I just did with the item, I'm going to click on this cell now. Let's delete this text, but instead of adding text manually, I'm going to actually go here to the add variable tag. So a tag means that it's going to showcase information, custom properties tied to items on our canvas. For example, if we want to bring in the information that is tied to the double bed that we have, there you go. We can select it and the props are going to be offered to us right here. So let's click the name double bed. And let's say we want this prop to be the brand, for example, and so on and so forth. 
And the nice thing about it is that this will stay updated. If we decided to procure a double bed from a different brand, if we have the price here and such, and we change it in the item, it will reflect in our table. Of course, you can then also go ahead and add um, links. You can add images, everything you need to these tables. So now we've learned everything about how to create custom properties, assign them onto elements in our drawing and create tables to reflect that information. The last step is typically showcasing this table. So I did delete the ones we placed before. Let's quickly do that again. Inserting a table on my canvas, we can kind of reformat it. And when we're ready to represent it, we can always go ahead and visit our paper canvas, which is where we prep our presentation. So in this case, I'm just going to add a new page onto my drawing, copy title block, and add a view that looks into my floor plan canvas. Uh, there it is. I can see the tip of my table. So let's just kind of uh, put that in place. We can crop it uh, for more information. Again, more than welcome to take a look at the canvases and views tutorial. Uh, and then you can really stylize and adopt this to make it show, you know, in the way you need it. If you want it to be nicer, different colors, different font sizes and such. But basically this is how RAN will enable you to have and to manage all your information in one place from drawing your architectural drawings, importing the files, stylizing atom blocks and so on and so forth, all the way to creating your spec sheets, your tables in a live synced matter. So hopefully you find this useful and a powerful alternative to the way you're managing your data today. We're looking forward to hear what you think. Thanks for watching this tutorial. If you have any more questions, you're welcome to book a demo with our team by using the link in the description. You can also join our community and of course, subscribe to our YouTube channel to get more videos like this. Have a good one.